the scope of the motion picture is tremendous. It brings to us the life of fallen lands and strange peoples. The highlights of current events. History in the making, in war and peace. From the laboratory, the progress of science. Great industries tell their magic story. Modern business uses the screen to teach and to sell. The theater screen gives pleasure and enlightenment to millions every day. In homes all over the land, the smaller movie cameras and projectors give happiness to the entire family. The pictures which we take ourselves perpetuate priceless memories of the changing years. This picture certainly seems to move, but by stopping and starting the action, we see that it is really the result of a series of slightly different pictures passing quickly before the eye. An optical illusion created by our persistence of vision. You can demonstrate this with a card. On one side, a bird. On the other, a cage. Twirl the card and the bird appears to be inside the cage because your eye holds each image briefly after it has gone. In the infancy of movies, this principle was adapted with paper pictures of progressive action run rapidly on a revolving wheel for an audience of one. In the historic scene shown here appears the inventor of the first talking motion picture, Thomas A. Edison, meeting some of his fellow pioneers in the march of the movies. Drawings from which animated cartoons are made show us how persistence of vision is applied to the screen. There is no more motion in any one of these drawings than on a postage stamp. But on each one, the action is slightly advanced. If the series is flipped fast enough, the picture seems to move. These pictures are photographed and printed on a long transparent strip of celluloid film. When run in a projector, they come to life. The essential parts of the projector are a pre-focused light source, easily replaced. An optical system consisting of condensers, adjustable reflector, and a quick focus lens, readily removed for cleaning. And a sturdy film moving mechanism built like a fine watch. Let us look behind the scenes as we greatly slow down the running speed. Normally, this shutter revolves well over 4,000 times a minute. Here, numbers take the place of pictures so that you can readily follow the film as it moves when the black blade momentarily obscures the light. Part of the shutter blade is now removed so that you can watch the shuttle tooth at work. Note that the stroke that shifts the film is a cycle of four separate clear-cut movements. Straight in, down, then out, and back up. The shutter revolves three times for every picture change, thus cutting down each dark period to less than five one thousandths of a second. This gives added brilliance and eliminates flicker on the screen. Normally, the film moves very fast, but absolute accuracy assures steadiness of the picture on the screen. This eliminates eye strain. Gradually now, let us bring the speed up to normal, 24 pictures every second. Here we have repeated each number 24 times so you can watch it change. The film moves freely in its channel. The camera used to photograph this picture works very much like the projector, except that the light from the outside reaches the sensitive film through a sharply focused lens. The precision of the camera must be matched by the accuracy of the perforations in the film. These punches produce the sprocket holes that control all film movements through every subsequent mechanism. A steady running camera and accurately punched film make it possible to superimpose two pictures to form a single composite scene. Here is a good example. The actors were photographed in Hollywood. The background, a street scene, was taken in another city. The slightest movement error in either camera would have spoiled the interesting effect. 
Now let us see what makes the movies talk. The sound is reproduced from a track on the side of the picture. This is a variable density track, one of the two sound systems in general use. And this, a variable area track. Either can be reduced to the smaller 16 millimeter film. Their operation in the sound projector is similar. The film passes through a sharply focused beam of light coming from the exciter lamp. With the volume control, we turn this light up and the sound becomes louder. As the soundtrack of the film passes through the beam, it creates constantly changing light impulses. These are transformed into minute electrical currents by means of a photoelectric cell. Then greatly amplified to become audible through the loudspeaker. Let us see how the sound was actually photographed on this film. The recording of my off-screen voice, such as you hear in newsreels, for instance, is done after the picture film is edited. We are testing and getting ready to record. In the recording room, they thread up for a take. My voice will be recorded on this separate negative. The monitor man at the control board modulates the tone and volume of the recording. I am here at the microphone, reading from my script, against the picture action on the screen. My voice sets in motion air particles which strike the sensitive diaphragm with a sound wave pattern that is transmitted into corresponding electrical vibrations. These are increased in volume thousands of times in the amplifier, for with variable area recording, they must attain sufficient strength to vibrate a tiny mirror which reflects a ribbon of light through the optical system to create a constantly changing vibration pattern on the sensitive film. My words that have been recorded on the soundtrack appear like this, as I am now speaking to you from the screen. Many of you perhaps never realize that voice and sound can actually be seen. With on-screen sound, the picture and sound negatives are made at the same time, so that the action and voice are exactly matched. In Hollywood, at the Grand National Studios, we see a well-known star in action. Cut! Fine! Great! Developing of the negative film is done in intricate machines, but the basic principle involved is much the same as the way you develop snapshots in two solutions and wash waters. The picture is then printed. After the print is developed, it is cut and edited. Often from as much as a quarter of a million feet of exposed film, less than 8,000 feet will be selected to make up the finished picture. Then the picture negative and soundtrack negative are matched and printed together on a single film called the composite print. This is the completed production finished to thrill audiences and theaters all over the world. For smaller projectors, 16 millimeter prints of these same pictures are made from the standard negative on a reduction printer. Because these smaller prints are less than one-fourth the area of the standard film, extreme accuracy is absolutely necessary for good results. Here is a 10-reel feature production on 35 millimeter film, which when reduced to 16 millimeter gives us an equal amount of picture with less bulk, less weight, and absolute safety from fire hazards. You can now buy or rent hundreds of these motion pictures, silent or with sound, educational subjects to Hollywood features. It is possible for anyone to show motion pictures anywhere, anytime, because we have efficient 16 millimeter projectors meeting every owner and audience requirement. The magic picture that moves and talks now comes to your screen at your command.